is alien life really out there? People have speculated on this question for thousands of years, but finally now scientists seem to believe that that could be very possible. All that coming up now. Hi guys, thank you for joining me back here again on the 401 Files. It's an absolute pleasure, as I always say on each and every video, to have you guys along here with me. Now please do remember, before we dive any further into this video, you can support the channel by heading over to Patreon. I will leave a link down below. Head over there, you'll get all behind the scenes content, um, ad-free videos, and much, much more as well. So if you do want to support the channel, head down to the link below, go be a Patreon, and help support the 401 Files. So as I'm sure that a lot of you are already aware, um, this news broke about a week or two ago now, and I always do like to sit on these things once they break, just to make sure there's no further developments before making the video. But um, scientists believe they may have found the signature for life in the atmosphere of Venus, which is very, very interesting. So phosphine gas has been found by scientists in the atmosphere of Venus. And as far as I'm aware, phosphine can only be created in one of two ways, either life or in a laboratory. Now, both of these things we just don't associate with anywhere else other than here on Earth. Uh, phosphine gas can be found here on Earth, and it is deadly to most things that need oxygen to survive. It was also used in World War I, as a chemical agent or a, um, a biological weapon. It's also a byproduct of making methamphetamine as well. So this is a very, very nasty type of gas. So straight away when we hear about this phosphine and how deadly it is, and then we understand that scientists have now found it in the atmosphere of Venus and claiming this could be a signature for life, we start to ask questions because phosphine, as, as I've just mentioned, takes away life. It kills pretty much anything that needs oxygen to breathe, but that doesn't mean that life can't survive there. Just because something that doesn't require oxygen doesn't mean that it's completely lifeless. One of the many possibilities for life is anaerobic bacteria. Now, anaerobic bacteria could be living in the atmosphere of Venus in this phosphine gas, and they don't actually need oxygen at all to survive, yet they are living things. So this isn't life as we was hoping. This isn't life as we were expecting, like with big heads, large eyes. Um, this is kind of microbial life. And so we wouldn't even be able to see it if we was there on Venus. So then it's highly unlikely that we're going to get to meet and shake hands with this new life form that we found. But that is still a massive discovery. Like if we found life, whether it be microbial or two-legged bipedal walking upright creatures, it doesn't matter what life that is or what form or shape it comes under. That is life elsewhere surviving on another planet besides Earth. That would mean that all of religious textbooks have to be rewritten, science books have to be rewritten, history has to be rewritten. This would change everything. And where does it end? Because although we're looking at microbial life in the atmosphere of Venus, that's just our first discovery. That means now that all the doors basically are open and anything's possible. There could be life on a much more grand scale somewhere else, more intelligent, more sophisticated, and this more stereotypical type of life that we were all hoping for. And you must remember as well that these anaerobic bacteria is just a theory at the minute. That's all scientists are basically saying this could be. It could be anaerobic bacteria living in the atmosphere of Venus, but it could be something else. So I find this really exciting because Venus has many different types of atmospheres. It literally changes from one square mile to the next over and over and over again. There are literally hundreds of different atmospheres up there on Venus. And although this anaerobic bacteria is up in the atmosphere living in the phosphine gas, that is just one little type of life living in one atmosphere. Now, there could be potentially many, many other different life forms living in these other different atmospheres up on the Venus. And the question I always think is, what does that bacteria turn into? It could potentially, over a given enough time, turn into something that we can relate to a bit more, something that walks upright, something with four legs. We just don't know. So another fascinating, weird and wonderful thing to think about is how life might look like on Venus because the surface pressure on Venus is the equivalent of being one kilometre beneath the ocean. And then we think about the Soviet Russian probes that were sent up there and only lasted a few hours before they were completely crushed and imploded on themselves. So like, when we think about life being able to survive up there against all these odds, how does that life look? So as I've already stated, that on the surface of Venus, um, things do look grim. But if we move up 50 kilometers into the clouds, things do start to look a bit more livable. So do we find anything similar here on Earth? Is there bacterial or microbial life floating around, flying, swimming, whatever you want to call it, up in our atmosphere? The answer is yeah. There's like 2 million tons of the stuff. 
that is drafted up from the ground via air currents and these include bacterial, microbial life and also plant algae. Venus is still a very deadly place and it's hard for us to imagine life being able to exist there. And so we ask ourselves the question, is there bacterial life here on Earth that we can somehow compare that lives in these um, acidic locations? And the answer is yes, there is very acidic locations on Earth that bacterial life does exist and we call these acidophiles. And in fact, they don't just exist, they thrive. I want to make another interesting point here as well to think about, and that is that these microbials, these bacterial forms of life that are living in the atmosphere of Venus, if that is what they are, might not have even started there. They might have started on the harsh terrain below, but over millions and millions of years, somehow evolved to come off the surface and thrive up in the upper atmospheres. Now, that would be a great sign that life on Venus is moving forward, life on Venus is evolving, and like I said previously, what does it evolve to? So we don't have a time machine, we don't have no way of going back in time to observe Venus in its earlier days, but recent simulations have shown that Venus could have held liquid water for three billion years, and it was very much Earth-like, and in fact, it only became uninhabitable 750 million years ago. So I'm just going to share a few of my own personal thoughts with you guys and I want you to drop down that comments box below and let me know what you think, whether you agree with this or you disagree with this. Either way is fine, just comment below and let me know what you guys are thinking. But for me personally, I don't think this is breaking news. I feel like information such as this new finding has been common knowledge to people for many, many years. I think that since the earliest telescopes and the earliest satellites and probes sent up into space, people in the know, the higher echelon of people, have known about microbial life potentially living on other planets. Since the very early days when these probes, satellites and telescopes were being used to look further into the solar system, I think that these people have known for a very, very long time. And I think that a lot of people assume disclosure will come via an alien being created on national television. That's how people expect disclosures to happen. But I've always said that I think we're being drip fed information so that when the time comes to, re to re reveal this information that we aren't alone in the universe, it's not so shocking to everybody. And it comes in many different forms. This is just one of them. Over the last 50, 60 years, sci-fi movies have increased tenfold. We've had movies like Interstellar, The Martian, the Alien franchise that continues to grow, even funny films like Paul the Alien and The Fourth Kind. All these different sci-fi movies depicting space travel and life elsewhere in the universe are becoming more and more frequent. Now, to me, this is just their way of making us being familiar, familiarised with the idea. So that's what I'm thinking, guys. I'm thinking this is just another stage that they're trying to put across to us that life does exist. We need to start getting used to it. They've probably known about this for a long, long time, and it's like with anything, even technology such as the iPhone. When you get your iPhone from the store and they say it's the new phone out, do you actually believe that? Or do you believe they've known about this technology for a long, long time? Comment below, guys. You've all been awesome, as always. Stay tuned for the next video, which will be coming out very, very soon. You guys have been awesome. Like I said, please do head over to Patreon, support the channel. I'll see you on the next one.